keep your jackets and your toques on, and uh, if you need to, you can always snuggle up to the person sitting next to you or a very friendly place you're going to take But do please respect each other's boundaries. <laughs> In particular, today I want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us for the first time and those of you who are watching online. At MCC Toronto, we welcome folks from all faith traditions. Some of our bedrock beliefs are that we believe in a loving God known by many, many names and that God's love is offered to everyone unconditionally and that there are many paths towards God and one of them is Christianity. Just one other final announcement before I turn it over to Reverend Dina Dudley. On January 21st will be the installation of the new senior pastor. <laughs> and on January 28th will be a retirement celebration for Brent with the Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson preaching. <laughs> and so do mark both those Sundays in your calendar, the 21st and the 28th. Both will be great times of celebration. And we just want to remind you of that every week as we get a little closer. And Dina. We would like to get to know you better. And uh, so we have the, the blue connection cards in the pew pockets around you if you want to receive our weekly e-newsletter or if your contact info has changed. And our yellow prayer cards, if you have a prayer you would like to share with folks, you'd like a, somebody to pray for you, uh, or if you'd like to um, connect with one of the deacons for, or for pastoral care, fill out a yellow card and those can go in the offering baskets a little later in the service. Our angels of the week this week are all the folks who spent a great deal of time and energy and love organizing and planning and cooking and prepping this year's Christmas Day dinner here at the church. Uh, you all brought so much joy to the many people who came on Christmas Day. So uh, I especially want to thank uh, Linda Leanders, uh, Damien and Gila Cass and all the team. But if you were part of that team or t attended and brought the love that day, Please give yourselves a big hand. <laughs> Linda, how many folks did we have? 100 folks, even though all that snow, so thank you. Um, we have a membership class coming up next Sunday afternoon, uh, Sunday, January 7th, from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, and uh, in the triangle room downstairs. And then we will be receiving new members the following Sunday, the 14th. And this is going to be Brent's final time leading the membership class before he retires. So if you're interested in becoming a member, or if you're just interested in finding out more about MCC Toronto, uh, please register with Andrew Holmes at aholmes at mcctoronto.com. Or if you can find Andrew, oh, there he is. Uh, just talk to him. In addition to the service this morning, obviously, um, assuming we get the sanctuary warmed up again, uh, we will have evening worship here at 7 p.m. Uh, for more ringing in the new year. And then next Sunday on the 7th, our worship will return to our regular schedule of 9, 10, 50, and 7 p.m. I just looked up on my cell phone and in Red Deer, Alberta, where I lived just a few short months ago, it's minus 32. Minus 46 with the wind chill. So I know some of those folks will be watching online, so hold them in your thoughts and prayers. If you think it's cold in here, imagine what minus 46 with the wind chill feels like. But do they have heat? Yes, good point. <laughs> well Send heat, Red Deer. And now would you rise as you're able and extend a hand of friendship to one another. Snowman hug, yes, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can we just stay like that? <laughs> oh, good morning. Wearing those organ shoes. Come and 
sing praises to God our Maker. Come, come and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come, for our God, our God is, our God is worthy. Our God. Loving God, God of all the ages, on this morning, light a divine fire within us and warm us with your love. And God, may we keep that fire burning in our hearts throughout the year. The year to come as we take the news of the good news of your unconditional love to all people. In all your many names, amen. amen. <laughs>
Good morning. My name is Kevin Wilcock. I'm one of the volunteer deacons here at MCC Toronto. If anyone has any questions about what they've experienced this morning or maybe is new to this congregation, uh, please feel free to chat in the Welcome Centre. I'll be there for a few minutes after service today. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, your abundance surrounds us and sustains us. We thank you for gifts of friendship and for new beginnings, for life as it unfolds and new opportunities for growth. For the year ahead. For those who enjoyed our fellowship Christmas dinner. God of grace, we know you hear our prayers. Spirit of hope in our lives and in our world, there are many troubled by concerns. Some face the uncertainty and pain of illness. Some wrestle with anxiety and fear about work, about relationships, and about themselves. We pray that your healing love may touch these lives. Father of Patty Gray, brother of Mike Dodds, God of hope, we know you hear our prayers. Spirit of compassion, be with us as we face losses in our lives. Where there is disappointment, lead us to joy. Where there is grief, fill us with your peace. Where there is death, help us to say goodbye for now and not forever. We pray for for loved ones who have died this year. God of compassion, we know you hear our prayers. O breath of the universe, you have created us for joy. Open our minds to the gracious promptings of your spirit. Increase our trust and guide our hearts in the ways of your truth. Amen. 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 Transform us by grace and relieve us in peace. Hear this sacred reading. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. poet, Alfred Lord Tennyson, called Ring Out Wild Bells. Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light, the year is dying in the night. So ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old and ring in the new. 
Ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind for those who were here and we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor. Ring in neighboriness to all humankind. Ring out the slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in nobler modes of life with sweeter manners and purer laws. These are sacred readings. May they comfort us, inspire us, and challenge us. Thanks be to God. I think today it's time for a little bit of fire and brimstone, if only just to warm us up a little bit. I'm going to get some preaching going here. But first, please join with me in a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, and indeed the actions of our lives always be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. That's a biblical line, by the way, from one of the songs. <laughs> Not preaching and praying about being the rock. Anyhow, I have a, a New Year's Day poem and prayer for each of you that I want you all tomorrow morning to pray. Dear God, so far this year has been great. I haven't gossiped about my friends. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, cruel, or rude. And I'm very thankful. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed <laughs> on the first day of the year. And from then on, I'm probably going to need your help throughout 2018. Amen. So, friends, a very happy New Year's Eve day to you. And, you know, I love New Year's Eve, if only because it's an excuse for a great party. But it's also a chance to start anew, to let go of bad habits and to make resolutions. Maybe you're going to quit smoking or take on a new exercise regimen. Either way, New Year's is a perfect opportunity for new beginnings. And this Sunday begins my time here as the new primary preacher in this place. And over the next three Sundays, we're going to be having a little bit of a mini sermon series from the book of Isaiah. I've spent the last two days writing my next three sermons, so I'm actually three sermons ahead. But we'll be looking at Isaiah each... I know, this is a miracle. If you knew me, you would know how much of a, a miracle that is. But the book of Isaiah that we're going to be looking at for the next three weeks is one of the most important books of the Bible. It's the book of the Bible that the Christmas story references over and over again. So if you know Handel's Messiah, it sings lines from Isaiah more than any other part of the Bible. It's also the piece of scripture that Jesus read when he began his ministry in the Gospel of Luke. And other than the book of Psalms, it is the book of Isaiah that Jesus quotes more often than any other in scripture. And so it's essential to understand Isaiah. In fact, as Dina reminded me, sometimes Isaiah is called the fifth gospel because it is so intricately linked to Jesus's telling of the good news and in fact the term gospel comes from the book of Isaiah 
So today we're going to be focusing on our reading from Isaiah 43 when we hear, Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. And now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? That first line, behold, I am about to do a new thing, may sound a bit familiar because almost every week, every second week, in fact, we say it as part of our prayer of reconciliation when we do the assurance of pardon. God saying to us, behold, I do a new thing. And it's a wholly appropriate scripture passage for us, of course, on New Year's. And even though New Year's is a completely socially constructed holiday, it's the perfect time to pause and reflect And think about the year in a spiritual sense. To see New Year's as an opportunity for us to change. Now for us, the date of New Year's is January 1st, almost arbitrarily, because there are many different calendars in the world. In the Jewish tradition, New Year's is Rosh Hashanah, usually in September. In in the Chinese calendar, New Year's comes uh, at the full moon closest to February 20th. But here in North America and in most of the West, January 1st is our New Year's because we follow the Gregorian calendar, which is based on the Julian calendar, which is based on the uh, decrees of the Roman emperor, Julius Caesar, who followed the Greek god, Janus, whose feast day was January 1st. That's why this is New Year's, because of the Roman god Janus. Now Janus, whenever he's depicted, is depicted with two faces, one facing back and one facing forward. Janus is the god of beginnings and endings, of transitions and doorways and bridges and change. And so January 1st is the perfect time for us to consider a time of change. There's a picture of Janice on a coin. Always those two faces, one back, one forward. And that's the perfect metaphor for us right now as we stand in this time between old and new with two senior pastors right now. We're sort of like a little bit of a a two-headed beast at the moment. And it has the potential to be a little bit awkward. But Brent and I and the staff have been working really hard to spend these four months of transition and taking advantage of every single second of it. And so you may be wondering, what have I been doing for the last three months since my arrival here? And I can assure you, they've been keeping me busy with meetings and more meetings and lots and lots of meetings. As I learned about the past of MCC Toronto, but also learn about the future that is yet to come. And we've got some very exciting stuff coming. Just last Friday, the staff got together for a little bit of a Christmas party, and we all read our performance plans for 2018 and discussed our dreams and vision for the future and for the next year. And it was a really great session with a lot of laughter and a little bit of argument in a healthy debate kind of a way. But we stand right now on the precipice of something great, with one foot in the past and one foot in the future, like Janice, looking both to the past and to the future, or as Brent likes to say, saying hello and goodbye at the same time. But through it all, God is saying to us, behold, I do a new thing. Because God is up to something in us and with us, to transform our world. You see, the prophet Isaiah was writing in a particularly tumultuous time, writing about how God yearned to change the world toward justice. And Jesus, too, as he read Isaiah and acted out of Isaiah, was living in a tumultuous time, but was there to call us to transform our world toward justice. And I don't know about you, but I feel like we, too, are living in tumultuous times, but God is still there calling us towards transforming our world into justice. Reverend Sam recently in a sermon at the 7 p.m. service quoted Martin Luther King Jr. and said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. 
And so New Year's Eve is the perfect time to stop and think about what we wish for, how we wish to transform the world in this coming year. What changes we wish to see in our world and in ourselves. And change isn't easy. In fact, change is hard work, and that's why we resist it left, right, and center. That's human nature. That's institutional nature. And the church and any religious tradition resist change by its very nature. We may follow a first century Palestinian who called his followers towards change, but we are also a religious tradition. And the word tradition, by its very definition, means to resist change. So on one hand, Jesus is calling us to change, but on the other hand, as a religious tradition, we like to stay the same. And so in some ways, it feels a little awkward, kind of like Janus with one foot in the past and one foot in the future, called to change but resisting it at the same time. Dina was telling me that on the arc of the bridge at Queen Street across the Don Valley, there's a quote from the Greek philosopher Heraclitus. Am I saying it right, Dina? And it says this, The river I step into is not the river I stand in. Meaning that the very moment we step into something, time and change are already rushing past us. And we have to change or we will be swept away. Or as Bob Dylan says, the times, they are a-changing. And so in 2018, there's probably going to be some changes around here. And I know some of you are nervous about that. What is Jeff going to do as a senior pastor? Is he going to change that beloved prayer we do every Sunday? Or perhaps you're thinking, is he finally going to get rid of that prayer we do every Sunday? (laughs) Over the last three months, I've sensed both an appetite for and a fear of change. And sometimes the two go hand in hand, even in the same people, both an appetite for change and a fear of it. But I want to say something to you. Change isn't necessarily better. New isn't necessarily improved. God isn't saying to us, behold, everything's got to change. Rather, God is saying to us, behold, I do a new thing. We aren't changing for change's sake. We are changing for God's sake. Because new isn't necessarily improved, and change isn't necessarily better. And I'll show you what I mean. Triscuits. This week, Triscuits were on sale for cheaper than I have ever seen them. $1.67 a box. I had never seen them for less than $2.00. So I bought five boxes. And when I got home, and I popped them open, and took them out so I could eat my cheese ball on Christmas Eve that I had made, I noticed the bag was half empty. They used to be 250 grams a box. And now they're 200 grams a box, and so are Ritz crackers, and so are Wheat Thins. In fact, the Wheat Thins box even says, new look, across it. It's the exact same size box with 20% less crackers. New and improved doesn't necessarily mean better or cheaper. And so I'm really tempted to make a joke about how Brent and I are the same size, but I'm a little less crackers, but I'm not going to do that. (laughs) So right now we stand between two years, one past and one future. We stand between one long-term pastor and one new pastor. And we can use this occasion as an opportunity to ground ourselves in the present to let go of the past, to let go of our worries about the future, but to ground ourselves in the present moment. And that is our task, not just on New Year's, but always, to ensure that we are grounded in the present moment and rooted in God's call to us. 
And that's a point that I think Jesus sought to hammer home throughout his ministry. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, No one who puts their hand on the plow and yet looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. We can't sit here with our hands on the plow, tilling the fertile soil for the future growth, and expect we can do that looking back the whole time. No, to till the soil means to look forward and not to obsess about it, not to imagine the plants that will grow, not the possibility that will come to fruition, but to focus on the plowing. As it is said, sometimes we need to plant trees under whose shade we will never sit. Because if we focus on the harvest before we've even planted, we'll get nothing done. And if we focused on the harvest of the past, we won't get anything done either. Jesus also said, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. No one by worrying can add a single hour to their life. Jesus calls us over and over and over again to live in the present moment, and that is hard work, because half the time we're stuck in the past, worrying about the mistakes we've made, the what-ifs, the I-should-haves, and the other half of the time we're worrying about the future, what-ifs, what if I should? We spend a lot of time shooting all over ourselves, don't we? <laughs> but God offers us something new over and over again, and that is the chance to say, behold and witness God doing a new thing. Beholding isn't about the past. Beholding isn't about the future. Beholding is about the here and the now. You know, if you look at the Christian tradition, just as one example, and you look at our calendar year, Advent, as a holiday season we've just finished, is about the birthing of new things in us. Hope, peace, joy, and love. And Christmas is about the new birth of the Christ child. Next week is Epiphany, when we think about new ideas and new light in the spring coming. Easter is about death and resurrection and new life. Thanksgiving is about the new harvest. Reign of Christ Sunday is about the new creation God is birthing within our world. Are you noticing a theme? Every single major Christian holiday is about newness in God's love. And every week when we do the prayer of reconciliation, we are reminded that God gives us as many chances as we need, as many times as we need to behold and do a new thing. On New Year's Eve, I want you to think about God's calling to us as we ground ourselves in the here and now and behold and do a new thing. And you know what, if that new thing end ends up being a little bit less crackers, we can seek forgiveness and try again and again and again, as many times as it takes. In many ways, 2018 is going to be a year of experimenting for us. And you know what, in my heart, I am still a scientist. You know the scientific method, you ask a question, you do some research, develop a hypothesis, do an experiment and take observations and gather feedback, and then do it over and over and over again. And with each new round of experimentation, you behold God doing a new thing. So 2018 is going to be a great year, but a great year of experiments and some mistakes too. But when things go awry, when our experiment explodes, we can seek forgiveness and try again. But one thing is for certain, we cannot stay still and say, that's the way we've always done it before. For God calls us to till the soil and co-create something miraculous with her. God calls us to transform our world towards justice one step at a time and build God's dominion on earth as it is in heaven, one brick at a time. So remember, no matter how terrible 2017 might have been for you, 2018 is a new year. No matter how terrible today is for you, tomorrow is a new day. No matter what mistakes you've made about the past, you are worthy of forgiveness. No matter what has happened to you in your past, you can forgive and let go and move forward. No matter what anxieties you have about what is to come, trust in God and it'll be okay. Thanks be to God. Amen.
way to a new relationship with God, freeing us from whatever binds us, perhaps freeing us from our past, reconciling us with God in the present and in the future and with each other and with ourselves. And so we pray. God, we recognize those times when we have separated ourselves from you and each other. We have not always cared for, respected, and loved our world, our neighbor, or ourselves. We have sinned by things we have done and by things we have left undone. We open our hearts again to the renewal, the forgiveness, and the freedom you offer. Please hear this good news. God is saying to us, behold, I make all things new. In every moment you are loved and so you are forgiven, free in the name of God who created you, who dwells within you, and who goes with you always. Amen. Amen. I invite our servers to begin to come forward and then I invite the rest of our community to come forward for time, for anointing, and for healing.
And so, we stand on the precipice of a new year. One foot in the past and one foot in the future. We live in interesting times of transition and change. And through it all, God says to us, Behold, I do a new thing in you and with you. And so now your gifts, tithes, and offerings that we might birth newness into a new year will now be received. But first, a musical gift. No, it's new and improved. Jeff, you're on. All right. <laughs> Does he know where Middle C is? Probably not. It's always on. <laughs> In your head, it's always on. <laughs> do improv really well. <laughs> you in the right key? If you're losing your voice, I will take up your song. If you're losing your strength, I will carry you along. If your dreams are locked away, I will help find the key. Honey, don't you be shaking your faith in me. She always adds stuff. And more stuff. If you need some joy, then some joy I will bring. If you feel you can't fly, I will bandage your wing. And if you need a place to hide, I will put you up in a tree. She would too. Jeannie, don't you be shaking your faith in me. <laughs> How did it happen? When did, did it, it begin? begin? You're like a second sister or a second skin. How did it happen? When was the day we put two and two together and the music played? If you need some good luck, I will hunt down a clover. If you need a good friend, say the word and I'll come over. And if you need a laugh, we'll share it. A he he. Honey, don't you be shaking your faith in me. How did it happen? What can we do? Sometimes we pick a fight, but still we stick like glue. You just sang that wrong. I did, yes, okay. Can we do that again? You want to do that? Yeah. Okay, here we go. How? Starting at how? Two, three, and. How did it happen? What can we do? Sometimes we stick a fight, but still we stick like glue. Pick rhymes with stick. Right, one more time. Yeah. Three, four. How did it happen? What can we, we do? Sometimes we pick a fight, but still we stick like glue. How did it happen? When was the day we put two and two together? And what more can we say? She always hits the Page high turn. notes for me, yeah. Page turn. Yeah, one, two, three. If you have mountains to climb, I will climb right beside you. Every step of the way, I will be here to guide you because sure? you need it. If you need inspiration, that's what I'll try to be. Honey, don't, don't you be shaking your faith in me. If you have mountains to climb, I'll climb right beside you. Every step of the way, I will be here to guide you. If you need inspiration, that's what I'll try to be. Honey, Honey don't, don't you be shaking your faith in me. Don't you be shaking your faith in me. Don't you be shaking your faith in me.
Let us pray. God, we offer these gifts out of the abundance of our work in this community. Your love frees us to be generous with each other and inspires us to action as we build bridges from this place into a world hungry for hope, for justice, and for peace. And so we commission these year and gifts to your service in the world. Amen. come now to the communion table, a place where we symbolically celebrate that we are all one in God's love. At this table, all are welcome, people of all ages and stages, including young people, people of all orientations, genders, and gender identities are welcome to this table to symbolically break bread, to drink from the cup, and to know that we all belong together in God's love. God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O loving God, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the company of heaven, who forever sing to proclaim the glory of your many names. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. And as you do this, remember me. See the love you gave and the love. 
Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. These are the gifts of God, and we are the people of God. Come, for all are welcome, and all is ready.
Friends, on this last day of the calendar year, go from this place knowing you are beloved, that God says, behold, I do a new thing in you and with you. And as you go forth from this place, take with you the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah. Take with you the blessing of the Son Jesus, born to our sister Mary. And take with you the blessing of the Holy Spirit that broods over us as a mother goose over her goslings. Go in peace, go in hope, but most of all, go in love. Amen. Amen. Deacon Kevin is going to be in the Welcome Center following our worship service. If you have any questions or would like to connect with somebody for prayer, you're all welcome to the social hall for a time of coffee and conversation following the worship service. And you're invited to come back next Sunday when we return to our usual worship schedule of 9 a.m. and 10.50 a.m. and 7 p.m. And there is, of course, a 7 p.m. service tonight if you want to start your New Year's Eve celebration in style with our elevation service and if you're yeah the sanctuary should be warm by then hopefully and there's coffee and tea in the social hall if you really want to warm up and triscuits <laughs> next week if you ever want is next week my ninja turtle sermon or is that the week after that no, that's two weeks after. Well, if you really want to know what Jesus and the Ninja Turtles have in common, come both next week and the week after that, because there's going to be some interesting sermons ahead. Mwahahaha. <laughs> and I invite us to join together in our closing song.